Je vais vous présenter des éléments sur la biodiversité des rivières intermittentes. Je vais vous présenter des éléments sur la biodiversité des rivières intermittentes. Qu'est-ce qu'une rivière C'est une rivière qui s'arrête ou qui s'arrête temporairement. C'est une rivière qui s'arrête ou qui s'arrête temporairement. Sur ces photos prises du même point de vue, on peut voir une rivière avec des rivières intermittentes. Ces photos prises du même point de vue, on peut voir une rivière avec des rivières intermittentes. Ces photos prises du même point de vue, on peut voir une rivière avec des rivières intermittentes. Ces photos prises du même point de vue, on peut voir une rivière avec des rivières intermittentes. Ces photos prises du même point de vue, on peut voir une rivière avec des rivières intermittentes. Ces photos prises du même point de vue, on peut voir une rivière avec des rivières intermittentes. Ces photos prises du même point de vue, on peut voir une rivière avec des rivières intermittentes. Ces photos prises du même point de vue, on peut voir une rivière avec des rivières intermittentes. Ces photos prises du même point de vue, on peut voir une rivière avec des rivières intermittentes. Temporarily, locally, in space, the same river may have areas with water that flows, areas with water that doesn't flow, and dry areas. Intermittent rivers are numerous and prevalent. They can be found in everywhere, including the Antarctic area and uh, in wet areas. This map shows you the uh, hydrographic network in France, which can uh, dry out in grey. This work comes from a model work. Uh, Uh, carried out area per area, estimating that 20 to 40 percent of the hydrographic network in France is intermittent. Globally, half the rivers are intermittent rivers. As you can see from this map, intermittent rivers are not limited to the dry and hot areas, such as the Mediterranean area. They can be found everywhere on the western part of France, especially. Intermittent rivers may be naturally intermittent, simply because of climatic, hydrologic uh, and hydrogeological factors. But sometimes uh, they become intermittent because of uh, man, man taking water from the river, from the aquifer, or man building uh, dams. And these systems are expanding. There are seven of the biggest rivers in the world which have dried out in the last 30 years. This has happened with the Yellow River in China, the Mekong, or the Colorado. Ecologically speaking, these systems are fascinating because they are made of uh, habitats which are both aquatic and terrestrial, living together and interacting. I'll give you an example. This is the mosaic of uh, the habitat for a small river in the poitou charentes area in France called the Toirette. In blue areas where water flows, in orange water that doesn't flow, and in uh, yellow areas uh, that where water has dried out. And uh, measurements are made every two weeks, and you can see that the habitat mosaic is uh, reorganizing itself every two weeks, depending on the river flow and the level of the aquifer. The mosaic is colonized by uh, terrestrial and aquatic uh, species, and a dried out river can be very rich in terms of biodiversity. If the drying out is not too severe, we can still have all of the uh, aquatic species, crustaceans, fishes, all kinds of communities also that can be found on the banks, mammals and birds. But there are species which are characteristic of uh, intermittent uh, rivers. This type of vegetation is, uh, in the second picture, laurel is uh, characteristic of uh, rivers that dry out. There are large mammals in Africa that colonize the dried out rivers to find shade or water or to uh, comply, uh, to um, achieve migration. In Australia, there are examples, or in the southern part of the United States, where the dried out uh, rivers have cultural and spiritual value. And more recently, our research has shown that even in our countries, dried out rivers could be colonized by terrestrial arthropods. Very rich communities, 120 species were collected in a small river that dries out north of Lyon. There are aquatic species that have uh, a adjusted by adapting uh, specific behaviors in order to resist drying out. These species leave uh, cysts, larvae, or eggs behind. The metabolism slows down, and they can wait in a dry environment for weeks or months. All you need to do is collect sediments uh, from a dried out river bottom and place them in water in the laboratory and after two weeks, 20, 30, 40 species will emerge from the uh, sediments. We know that these communities are very rich and this can be seen when we place them in water again, but it also depends on 
the period during which the river was dried before we collected the sediments. It means that we have to protect dried out rivers, although we may believe that the ecosystem is dead or inactive, but it's not dead, it's not inactive. There are terrestrial species that have adapted to uh, resist the contrary situation, flood. We have the giant water bug, a semi-aquatic bug living in Northern America, which is a ferocious predator feeding on fishes, uh, frogs uh, and invertebrates which are present uh, during a drying out period. They can uh, detect a flood uh, from the uh, rain signal and they escape on the banks. We also have uh, this type of ants. They can resist flood by building rafts or bridges. Generally speaking, uh, biodiversity in intermittent rivers is a very fragile biodiversity. This graph shows you the diversity of several biological groups, bending invertebrates, uh, fishes, plants, depending on the uh, average duration of the drying out period. Here we see a strong decrease of biological diversity when the uh, dry period uh, increases. Every action that will change the uh, drying out uh, natural uh, period in a river will have consequences on the biodiversity. And because those systems are often perceived as uh, useless or anecdotal, they are not covered by legislation or water management policies in most countries, and therefore they are deteriorated by man. When there is no water, man will tend to come and uh, collect sand, sediments, mud, or use them as uh, a way to eliminate uh, water come from the industry. In in southern France, there are rivers that only flow because they are being uh, fed with water from um, stations. And these um, rivers are not well known by scientists. People have focused on perennial rivers, uh, but we now have concept models in order to study rivers. And until now, everything was focusing on perennial rivers, all the concepts, uh, upstream, downstream, uh, the presence of current, uh, all the models are very much focused on perennial rivers and aquatic species in perennial rivers. And there is no room for phases during which terrestrial community may uh, inhabit the uh, dry rivers. One of the challenges uh, posed by intermittent rivers is this kind of uh, phenomenon, spectacular, but it happens very often after six months. A river is, uh, after having been dry for six months, the river is flowing again. This is spectacular. All of the uh, terrestrial organisms and all the matter deposited uh, in the river may be uh, drawn downstream uh, to over a very long distance. This is something we are not fully aware of, and it has consequences on some terrestrial invertebrates. The massive quantity of organic matter exported downstream might change the vision we have currently on the contribution of uh, waterways and rivers to uh, organic matter degradation, generally speaking, and what is the contribution to uh, greenhouse effect gases of uh, waterways. Intermittent rivers are fascinating ecosystems, and uh, the research on these ecosystems is now growing and taking off, and in five or six years' time, we will know far more than we know nowadays on intermittent rivers.